Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you are doing awesome. It is Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. Can't believe how quickly this week is gone. So my thought today, well actually it was six words. United we stand, divided we fall. And so I wrote a lesson um, about it very hurriedly have some typos in here but um, anyway I wanted to share that with you just kind of some thoughts that I have about our country about the world and how it seems like we're divided in so many different areas not just two it's like a lot of different areas so anyway I wanted to share that with you and share the good news at the end um, which is that Jesus, Jesus is the good news. I'm waiting on my music. It kept saying that YouTube kept closing. I don't know what that was about. I think tomorrow I'm going to clean my desk off. I've got to come in here and do some work. Maybe I can get my desk cleaned off while I'm in here. I'm looking for my Bible, which is over here. I have two deals of water over here. I don't want to spill them on my computer. Water is so good. All right. So let's jump into prayer. And let's pray, you know, that God would unite us more. And that... Um, People get saved. I think a lot of the disrespect is that uh, many are not God's children and so they don't have that respect so they don't respect a lot of other things either. Okay, but I, I'm not a judge and so I don't know people's hearts and minds. It's just my observation. I'm not judging anybody because only God knows whether people are saved or not. Okay, so let's jump into some prayer. God, we just come to you and we thank you, God, because you are in control and you are on your throne, God, and you do know all hearts and minds, and we just thank you for that. We thank you that you are the great Jehovah and you are the great I Am, and you are our everlasting Father. You are our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider. You are our shelter in the storm. You are all that we need, God. God, you are the righteous judge that will come and judge all unrighteousness. And God, but yet God, you are loving and kind and compassionate and uh, patient towards the lost. God, we just pray that you would open the eyes and the ears of the lost and that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We just pray for them to return. We just pray for them to remember the relationship that they once had with you to return, to repent, and to let you restore that relationship. God, we pray for all the tragedies all over the world. God, we just pray that you would be with these people and that they would reach out to you and that you would meet their needs, God. We pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength. We also pray for Josie and her sister and Mr. Mike and um, her friend Maria that uh, is recovering from a fall God we just pray for healing for all of them and we just pray that you would give them strength and to overcome what their um, problem is I think it's allergies maybe sinus infection maybe bronchitis there's so many things that it can be this time of year and God anyway whatever it is you know exactly what it is we just lay it at the feet of Jesus 
And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, my praying chair warriors, let's get into this lesson. I'm not feeling quite as confident about this lesson as I do sometimes, but anyway. First, I want to read you what I shared on Facebook earlier. And I also share these on this page too. So I shared a song that, I mean, I do not listen to this type of music, um, but it says United We Stand, and it's by Moonshine Bandits. And it's kind of rap, it's kind of country, and it's kind of a mix. And uh, so this isn't my usual thing that I share. I usually share just Christian music. But it seemed to go with what I was feeling about united we stand, divided we fall. And, uh, and so I wanted to preface that, that I do not listen to country. I do not listen to secular music at all. But I looked for something that would go with this. And this was like the most current thing I could find. And so then when they started singing and I was reading the lyrics, I was like, yeah, that fits. That really fits. Okay, so here we go. This is not my usual song and message that I share, but I woke up early with this phrase on my mind, united we stand, divided we fall. Not my favorite type of song, but the lyrics fit my thoughts. The respect for authority is, lo is lacking by few, a loud few. The majority still respect authority in our flag too. I feel like our country is very divided, even splintered in so many groups that do not respect or like each other because they disagree. There apparently is no agree to disagree anymore. As a country, we are going to have to find some common ground to unify on. Even as Christians, we need to unify under the banner of Jesus. Jesus called us to love all people, not just the people that we love, know, and agree with. It is sad to see all that is going on in our beloved United States these past years. We need revival so badly. There are so many people that need Jesus as their Savior. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. To be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin time is short the time is now to turn back to the one true God God wants none to perish John 3 16 to 21 call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today okay so I really didn't have time to write a lot sometimes I write a whole lot more than that but I've had a really great day and I got to go and eat lunch with my daughter and my granddaughter and um, my adopted daughter and <laughs> my adopted granddaughter <laughs> and uh, our son and so we went to sugar biscuits which was really good and uh, I hadn't been to a restaurant in so long I'm really used to eating my own cooking and uh, that's I've improved since I just eat my own cooking but Anyway, I'm just not used to going to restaurants and eating other people's food right now. So hopefully, hopefully I will readjust to that because I really do enjoy it. Okay, so this is what I wrote. This is my lesson. United we stand, divided we fall. And I just wrote that this, this afternoon. So God woke me up this morning with this one thought, united we stand, divided we fall. I don't see a united 50 states lately. I don't. I see 50 divided states, which each state, each state having divisions within themselves. And they do. All of the states are divided within themselves. It's not just our government and the representatives from these states. It's within these states too. Um, and all 50 states divided also like all 50 states do not agree with all 50 states so why are we seeing this question mark 
It did not start last year, but was really ramped up last year through many events that took place. But we started hearing the division in 2007, and I believe that's right. In 2007, I started hearing very clearly there is a black America and there is a white America. And it really made me sad because we are all Americans. There are Chinese, there are Indian, there are white, there are black, there are Hispanic, there are all kinds of nationalities. There are Iranian Americans. There are all kinds of nationalities in America. We are a melting pot. And so there is not a one or the other America. We are all Americans. You know, I don't... If I had to describe my nationality, it would be like Scottish, Irish, um, British, I mean, there's just too many because I have too many mixed up in me. I'm an American. Everybody is an American. If, if you live here, you are an American. And, and I think that's a big part of it is that I started here in that division in 2007. So our generations are being taught not to respect authority or how to comply by parents and education also. Many generations do not follow the teachings of God either. Can this continue or will it make our country fall eventually? I believe that if we don't unify, if we don't get unified under something, our country will fall. Because with all the division that we have inside our country, it's perfect for another country to just come in and take over. A uh, few loud people do not understand that you can disagree to disagree with people and still have respect for them and even love them through the love of Jesus. Um, so I think we have to get to that point too. We're not going to agree with everybody about everything, but that's okay. You can still love people and you can still have a relationship with them, whether you agree with them or not. Um, you can and Jesus called us to love people he didn't say love only the people that aren't sinners or love only the people that agree with you he said love people he said love our neighbor well our neighbor is everyone everyone is our neighbor okay so is the divide the left or right not all people rest on the right or left some are independent, and some really care nothing about either or independent either because there's just some people that are just, they don't care about government. They're not on the right or the left or independent. They're, they're not nothing. So I believe it is a spiritual problem of salvation, saved and unsaved and uncaring about either. So you got you have your saved people, you have your unsaved people, and then you have your people that don't care. So why is why does disunity exist? That's a good question. Why does disunity exist? So I grew up in an America where we recited the Pledge of Allegiance every morning before school. And we prayed too. And I think that's a huge problem is that we are not teaching our children to respect the country that they live in and to respect God. So this is the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't have a flag in here. But I'm going to put my hand on my heart anyway just because. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I remembered that, and I typed it out, but then I started doubting myself and my memory, and I went and looked it up, and I was right. I got it. I nailed it. Um, our generations were some of the last to do this at school, especially the prayer. The prayer ended in the 60s. 
in school. I was born in 1960. Sometime in the 60s, prayer ended. I did a did a college paper about prayer. And when it ended in it, all that stuff. I think it was a government paper. So our school here did it up until a few years ago. And they, they may still be doing it. I know they didn't do it in junior high. They did it in elementary and um, intermediate. But then when we moved to junior high, I never, I never heard any of it. And believe me, I was late. So. And uh, I don't know whether they did it really, really early or they just they quit doing it. Our children are not being taught to respect our flag, our country, or our government. It appears they are being taught to riot, though, in college and cause mayhem. Because a lot of the people that are out there rioting and causing mayhem are the, are the college age. And this is what they're teaching them in the universities, is if you don't like it, do a sit-in or a riot or walk out or whatever. Um, instead of trying to go through the diplomatic, you know, way of doing things, they just, um, they just insist on their way. So it is sad to see how far America has fallen over the last years. This is what the Bible says about unity. So everything that I will ever do is going to go back to scripture. Like, I, when I wrote this, I thought, well, this is just going to be about the government. But then I thought, no, I want everything to go back to Scripture. So let's read Philippians 2.2. 2. And this is talking about the church. But really, it should apply. It should apply to everyone. Philippians 2 2. Where's your daddy? He's Go get your daddy to change that. He's in there. Okay, Philippians 2 2. Okay, I'm going to start in 2 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. So again, this is talking about the church, but still... We could be of one accord. We could find something to unify under. And um, we could be of one mind. We could all say, okay, we love America. That is what we're going to unite under, is that we love America. But there are some out there that don't love America. And so what do we do with them? What do we do with the ones that don't love America? Personally, if they don't love America, I don't know why they're here. I don't know why you would want to be in a country that you hate. But anyway, so this is how the church, the church under Jesus should be. But because of things of the world and deception in the world, it is rarely like this. So even church, even church doesn't have this one accord, like-mindedness all the time because of things of the world. Because we're not perfect. We're not perfect. Okay, so let's read 1 Corinthians 1.10. <clears throat> First Corinthians 1.10 now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be, be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. 
For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. So see, even even back then, there were contentions. There was not unity, even back then. But we need to seek unity. He's saying we need to do it. There may be contentions, but you need to be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So it sounds like maybe some people were judging people. I don't know. That's just what I'm gathering from it. Probably not. But anyway. So we are to have no divisions between us. We let some of the stupidest things divide us. Really the stupidest things. We are to be like-minded at all times. I think this lesson could be for me tonight. We must be united. And it could be. Sometimes when I write lessons, they are for me. But somehow they help other people too. Okay. So let's... I need to turn my fan back on. It was warm earlier. I mean, it was cold earlier, so I have this long sleeve shirt on even though it's warmed up outside. Okay, so 1 Peter 3, 8. Let's see what 1 Peter 3, 8 says. And I quickly looked these up. I was on the phone while I did this, and um, I was cooking too. So I was doing like two things while I was doing this. I never have turned my music on. Okay, 1 Peter 3, 8 says, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be pitiful. Pitiful. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil or, or railing for railing, but contrariwise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. This is for me. This is for me. <laughs> because I comment on YouTube and sometimes I don't comment nice things. And sometimes I comment. I'm praying for... <laughs> I'm praying that they will repent. <laughs> sometimes I say things like that. And sometimes I just... I don't know. I need to be... I need to be more pitiful and courteous and not rendering evil for evil. So we must have compassion for each other and have brotherly, sisterly love. Be courteous. A lot of this sounds like walking in the Spirit and not the flesh. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In Galatians 5.22. And uh, walk, I don't know, I don't have the flesh <laughs> memorized. Um, so this is how we're supposed to be united and able to stand, is that we... Uh, we walk in those things. We walk in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You know, uh, some people require a lot of patience. Requires a lot of patience to deal with them. So these are some things that could unite us. Is, you know, the brotherly, the sisterly love. To be courteous. You know, I was taught, if you can't say something nice, don't say it at all. And I was taught to treat people like I want to be treated. And so those were taught to me from my mother. And But these things are in the Bible, too. So, um, 
I think that if we treated people with more respect, which I don't really have this problem where I live, but I know that um, I kind of think the problem has been blown up more than what it really is, is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that the majority of the people believe the same way I do. Not necessarily Christians, but believe more conservatively like I do. Okay, so how are we being divided and what happens when we are? Well, this is not good. This is not good, what this says. But it's true. It's true, and it's Jesus saying it himself. And he meant it so much that he said it in Matthew, he said it in Mark, and he said it in Luke. He said it in three books. He said exactly the same thing in three books. So it's pretty important. So Matthew 12, Matthew 12, 25, and this is what Jesus said. Um, and Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, because Jesus knows our thoughts, Jesus knows our hearts. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. So he said that in Matthew. And I kind of look at our uh, country as that. We are a kingdom divided against itself. And a kingdom divided against itself will fall. It, he says it shall not stand. And I think I think it's because that other countries will come in and see that we're weakened and take us over. We have got to find a way to unify. We do have to find a way to unify. Okay. Okay, not a lot can be accomplished with division. I think that's what we see in our government. It is so divided, like pretty much down the middle now with the tiebreaker on their side. Um, many are taking part in things against we the people and saying it is for us. But the truth is, that it is not like all this for the people all that stuff is not for us it is for taking our rights away so I wanted to do some research on it today but I did not but who I listen to and I trust um, that I mean that's what it is they're taking our rights away we're not going to have a Bill of Rights when they get done. It's going to be demolished. Our Constitution is going to be shredded. So this one once great nation will be no more. Um, I'll listen to somebody that calls it no morica. Um, it's sad. It's not really anything to laugh about. Um, so in Mark 3.24, Jesus says exactly the same thing that he said in Matthew. Mark 3.24 And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. So, division will not work.
So let's read Revelation 16, 19. And we'll read about some cities that did not stand. And TJ preached on uh, Babylon on Sunday back in the Old Testament, a Babylon story of Belshazzar and um, King Belshazzar and um, his kingdom was taken down because he got very prideful and he did not think, he thought he was untouchable and that's what happens when we get prideful and we think we're untouchable that's when we're going to fall we need to stay humble stay humble okay so um revelation 16 19 and the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell so more more than Babylon fell the cities of the nations because there's a lot of countries out there just like us that are divided they are not unified they're divided I don't know China may be unified but I, I mean I see riots in the streets all over the world all the time people are angry they uprise against their government uh, many governments are corrupt. Many governments are doing things that are illegal. And just like when I read the the Pledge of Allegiance a um, while ago, I thought about that with indivisible, like we can't be divided with liberty. We all get liberty and we all get justice. Well, there's there's not a lot of justice going on right now our judicial systems and systems our country other countries are corrupt they are not what they're supposed to be um anyway let's finish reading this and great babylon came in remembrance before god to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath and every island fled away and the mountains were not found and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven every stone about the weight of a talent I don't know how big a talent is but I think those are big and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail for the plague thereof was exceeding great so when Babylon, when he remembered Babylon, he poured out his wrath on Babylon. You see, God loves everyone. But his tolerance of unrepentant sin and greed in this world and um, blatant sin against him and blatant blasphemy against him and Jesus and the Holy Spirit is going to destroy this world. It's going to destroy it. And, and he doesn't want to do that. You know, he doesn't want to. But he's a holy God. And he's not going to let this unrepentant sin go on forever. So the fall of our country and the world will be from unrepentant sin, greed, and blasphemy against God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. There will be a payday for all of the things done against God. So okay, well that was that was a real downer, wasn't it? So let's end let's end on a high note. So let's go to Revelation twenty one. And let's read about our reward if we do follow the ways of God. If we do unify as Christians under God, if we do treat people that are not our brothers and sisters in Christ, loving and kind and courteous and respectful, then this will be our reward. This is a description of heaven. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. 
So heaven and earth is going to pass away. And there was no more sea. Even the sea is going to be destroyed. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So, no sorrow, no crying, no death, no pain, no tears. He will wipe away our tears. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even as jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the twelve gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth and he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it were equal. And he measured the wall thereof in hundred and forty cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was jasper, and the city was pure gold, likened to clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a cal chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrys chrys chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth Chrysoprasus, the eleventh, a jacinth, and the twelfth, an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was one of, was of one pearl. In the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. 
for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall be shut, shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So that, that is our reward. That is our reward for accepting Jesus as our Savior. We get eternal life and we get eternal life in heaven with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, all the angels, all of our family members that have gone before and our friends. We will be with them forever and ever and ever. Because this life is short. Let's see if I can figure this out. I don't have a Lonnie's bucket. I'll have to do the best I can with this. So this, this is really kind of long. Like this is about your life. Our lives are short. Our lives are short. Our lives are a dash. We have an arrival date, we have a departure date, and then the rest is eternity. It just goes on and on, or until you get to the end of the <laughs> of the wire, but actually eternity goes a whole lot farther. Maybe this is more like the size of your life. Arrival, departure, this in between is your life. Okay, well it's about the same size. Oh, well, anyway. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. So, this is a description of heaven. The only place where there will be perfect unification of churches and people with no walls to separate. There will be all tribes and nations and tongues in heaven. Nobody will be separated by any race. It will not matter. Because we will all be one. Brothers and sisters in Christ. God's children. I love this description and can't imagine what it will look like. Actually, as I was reading that, I was envisioning some of these things. And uh, I don't really think anything that I can envision would be come close. So there will be only peace, love, and joy. And the kingdom of heaven will always be united and never fall forever. No matter if our nation falls, and I pray it won't, heaven will stand for all eternity. And that is where we are headed that have accepted Jesus as our Savior. He is waiting for you if you have not. So... If you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior and you would like to, then repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you are God's one and only Son. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried for three days and rose from the dead on the third day. I believe that you ascended to heaven and are preparing a place for me. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior.
clean my heart and help me to glorify you. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay. So if you said that prayer in, and you meant it in your heart, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus' His Son. And um, if you would like a closer relationship with God, then uh, read His Word every day. Take some time and read His Word. And start in Matthew so you can learn more about Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Great stories about Jesus, what He did while He was here. All of the Bible points to Jesus, but Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are actually Jesus' words while he was here. And then um, pray. Pray to God every day and um, praise. Find you some praise music. I didn't leave you a very good example today, but that just it fit with what God laid on my heart today. Okay, so this is my um, my quiet time notes. Good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, of new opportunities to share my truth in the gospel of Jesus. A new beautiful day to spend with uh, blessings. So I did that. I went and had a wonderful lunch uh, with people that I love very much. I, I wanted to spend more time with them, but they're young adults and they're busy. And I so get it because I used to be a young adult and I was busy too. Um, a new beautiful day to spend with blessings. Be present in the moments of your life, child. I said, thank you, God, for another day of mercies and blessings, of new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for a day to spend with my blessings also. Um, thank you for a new beautiful day, God. It was a beautiful day today. Uh, child life is short, and my children must focus on the present and let tomorrow take care of itself. I woke you up with the thought of unity, child. Both sides are calling for it, but only one side is putting it into action. This is the side This is the side of majority. The other side is few, but say they are the majority. They do not tell the truth, and soon all of the truth will surface above their lies. Many will be in prison for their corruption. Many arrests are taking place. Many stolen children are being returned in the night. Uh, in the night, these raids take place. My timing is perfect, so stay united with the majority that are, that are on the right side. Many eyes and ears are being opened to the truth, and as this happens, the majority is growing. The chaos on the border is a distraction from the truth being leaked out, little by little, like a dripping faucet. I am soon to do something big that will wake up many. So be ready, child. It will be my hand, like, like the Bible story about Babylon. Yeah, I heard somebody else talk about this, too, so that was kind of a confirmation after hearing that sermon, then I heard another person talk about this story. As they celebrate, they will be invaded by their enemies. As a matter of fact, we may do that story tomorrow night. Time is very short for them, child. The majority needs to be united until the end. And I said, I see all of this, God, so clearly. They want us to believe that we are the few when it is them. They spew unity, but their actions are disunity. They lie like their father of lies does and deceive like the deceiver. 
God, you are the righteous judge and know all hearts and minds. Jesus will reign victoriously forever. Thank you for meeting me today, God. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, child. Be ready for the writing on the wall to come. The revival and reunion. And I said, Maranatha, God. Because we'll have the revival, we'll have the rapture, then we'll have the tribulation. So I'm ready for that great revival. I think it got started last year. And I'm ready for many people to open up their eyes and ears to the truth because much of what people are being told is not, um, it's not true. It's just not true. And so how you know whether things are true or not true is if it keeps changing, if the narrative keeps changing, and shifting and not being the same then it's not true and so also with Jesus we get the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will help us discern truth from lies so you can't fool a lot of Christians with a bunch of lies because we know truth you know this this is our truth this is what we measure up to we measure it up to the word. If it doesn't measure up to the word, then it's not true. And so, it's just a lot of things that don't make sense right now. But we do need unity so badly. We, I am afraid that our country will fall. Um, and it may be after the rapture, because after the rapture, <laughs> we're out of here. You know, so the people that and the Holy Spirit, the restrainer that is holding back the evil is out of here too. So, it is not going to be a, a good thing. They may be united, but our part of the division will be gone. And, our, and God's restrainer will be gone. So please don't be left behind. Please get saved. If you didn't get saved tonight, then please consider getting saved. Ask God to show you if He's real. He will. He will show you. He will show you. He, if you will get still, He will speak to you. If you will ask Him to speak to you, He will speak to you. If you call out to Him, He will be there. He really will. Okay. Well, I think I did everything that I came here to do. I'm going to do a blessing and a prayer. And I'm going to go try to get my son fed. He's being more finicky than others than other times today. And he keeps wasting food. And I don't know what's up with that. Okay, so in Numbers 6, 24 through 26, it says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Yeah, we need peace, too. Okay, let's pray. My friend Josie didn't make it. I hope she's doing okay. We'll pray for her to get better. I prayed for her this morning. can't remember whether I prayed. I think I prayed for her a while ago. God, we just come to you, and we are thankful, God, that you, you want us to be unified, God. You want us to be unified under the banner of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the compassion of Jesus, the light of Jesus. You want us to have that unity. You want us to share that with others. God, we just pray. We just pray that you would give us the boldness that we can go out and we can share your truth and we can share the gospel of Jesus with others, with a lost, hurt, and dying world, God. In our country, there are so many people. There are rich people and famous people that have everything. God, they have everything they can buy, but they are not happy. They are not satisfied with all the riches and all the things that they have because they lack Jesus. And Jesus is so much better than all of the things, the material things that do not last. 
God, I just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, God, and let the Holy Spirit draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. I pray for the ones that seem to be on the wrong side of you, God. I pray for them to repent. And if they ever had a relationship with you, God, for them to remember that relationship, to repent and return, and have you restore that relationship to them. God, only you know all hearts and minds, and we do not. So we just lay that at your feet, God. We just pray, God, that you would be with us tomorrow and bless us with a good day tomorrow. God, we pray for all the sick. We just pray that you would heal their bodies and that you would be with their families, God. We pray for the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth. Oh, I'm sorry, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, God. I think I'm a little sleepy. I got up early this morning. That you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, God. That they would feel your presence and that they would know where their family member is, what we read tonight in Revelation 21, God should give everyone a tremendous amount of peace that that's where their loved one is. And God, it gives me a tremendous amount of peace. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright, so I messed up on that prayer. See, I am no perfect Christian. I am, I think I'm sleepy though. I am a sleepy Christian because I got up about two hours earlier than what I normally get up. But I knew that I was going to go to lunch with my daughter and uh, I knew we were going to try to be there at 11. And then I got an hour reprieve, but I'm still sleepy. I just uh, am struggling. Anyway. Uh, God bless you all and your families abundantly. Much love. Much love. And cyber hugs. And good night.